crazy. How do we create a scenario where, you know, we can do a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand jobs anywhere around the world in a second? That's the future, you know? So he goes, if you're serious about this, I'll sell my business, um, close it down, sell it, whatever, and we start this like now. Let's uh, start off with, I guess, you know, how it all happened for you. Like, how did WePloy come about? Uh, and talk about like through the recruitment phase on how you kind of seen the gaps in the market to change that and what made you land in tech? Tell me about that. Yeah, um, so it's a pretty interesting story. Um, at the time, my partner and I, we were um, trekking through Everest. So we did the um, Everest Base Camp. Yeah. And uh, I remember there was this, I was walking through the um, one of these villages and this, this kid saw my camera. Um, it's actually a photo of him on, on my back. Um, and he. Oh, right now? Yeah, on my on my. No, um, it's, I don't know if you can see it. There's a little kid. There's a, there's a kid. So he he oh ran up. That's a photo God. I took. But basically, he he saw mm. my um, he saw my camera and he runs up and he goes uh and he's like fuff, fuff. I'm like what's this kid saying? Yeah, and yeah, then he yeah. goes uh he points at my camera. He's like take a photo. And yeah. he just like struck the pose. And I was like ah oh, cool. He wants me to take a photo. So I took a photo, <laughs> um and got talking to him and he and he had this little uh, notebook and he's like mm. uh I'm looking through it. And um, it's like all these drawings, and I go, what, like, what, what do you, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he goes, I want to be an artist. And I was like, cool, like that's pretty cool. Um, so, anyways, that was that. We continued our our trek, and then a couple of days later, um, we're on this like mountainside, and I don't know, he just kept popping up in my head. And uh, my Sherpa at the time, I go to him, hey, you know, um, little Sergey that we met in the village, he said he wanted to be an artist. What's the likelihood of him being an artist in this? like in this world, you know, in, in, in your world kind of thing. Right. And he turns around and he goes, Look, probably unlikely. He's either going to be a, a monk, uh, a Sherpa or a farmer. And I'm like, but, you know, I see that in these villages you've got internet now. He can kind of speak English, you know, like why can't he just get on a plane and go to New York yeah. and, and do that? And he's like, well, think about it. Like if he goes over there, he's a like how, um, what's the word? He was saying like basically, how can he compete against a local? You know, he's a Nepalese kid that is, uh, English is his second language. How's he going to go over there? He doesn't have the skill sets. He doesn't have this. He doesn't have that. It's a it's a big risk for him. So better for him to just stay here and do what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was working in recruitment, so I fell into recruitment and I was kind of like looking at my own sort of way. And I was and and when he told me that, I was like, you know what? He's, he's not wrong. Like. Um, as a recruiter, you know, if, if Sergio's CV came over to me on, on like, um, in, you know, my inbox or whatever, mm. um, I don't know if I could help him, uh, you know, because basically what I was doing was I was helping the cream of the crop, you know, I'm placing, let's say, 30 jobs a, a month, that kind of thing. But there's so many people around the world. And that's when it kind of like dawned on me where I was like, I got into recruitment because I wanted to help people so that people could like find better jobs. I'd been in that. Uh, position where I'd, I'd tried to find work, people told me no, or people wouldn't interview me, all that kind of stuff. And so when this story about Sergey came about, it kind of really hit home, and I realised, well, the current recruitment model, it works for people who have really good CVs, but for people like your Sergeys and even people like myself, all that kind of stuff, our CVs aren't beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what, what we do have are skills that we can share with companies and provide. And so that's kind of where this idea came about was like, well, how do we make it so rather than helping only 30 people a month find jobs, how do we create a scenario where, you know, we can do a thousand, 10,000, a hundred thousand jobs anywhere around the world in a second. Um, and so with that kind of problem or that sort of, uh, you know, idea, that's where we started to go, all right, well, how do we make this work? Um, my, my background, I'd worked in a couple of tech businesses before, so I kind of knew how automation worked. Mm. Um, so I kind of like looked at the recruitment model and said, well, if we started to automate this process, we could streamline this dramatically because a lot of a lot of what I was doing was essentially a, an administrative task if you break down the, the actual core function. And so when I got back home, um, 
uh, like I started drawing like the, on a piece of paper, like the wireframes and started like uh, designing this. So, this is, so how long were you in um, overseas and when did you actually come back and start like, I guess, mapping that out? Yeah, yeah. How so long? I was... Because that's it, a really interesting story. Yeah, I was, a crazy story, yeah. I was over in Nepal for two weeks or two and a half weeks. So two and a half weeks. It's a, it's a crazy story in itself. Um, it's crazy, Basically, yeah. I, I proposed to my missus there. Thank, thankfully, oh, she said yes. And then I had to get chopped it out of a, um, a, on a mountain which was like a pretty surreal story right. but when I landed like uh, back home in Australia um, the idea started to flow and I was like okay this is something that you know is it wasn't just the altitude this is something that could be real so and I then happened on the plane or you just like landed you just came into your apartment or your home you're like yes I'm gonna start like writing this down this is a great uh, idea. yeah no so it was like kind of still in my head like whilst we were there like yeah. um, I had to spend some time in the hospital because like when you get airlifted off the mountain you have to like stay in a hospital to make sure everything's okay right. so I was just thinking these thoughts okay. and then when I came home um, like uh, it just it never like it never um, disappeared like it just kept like I'd sit at home watching Netflix and then it'd just be like, this thought would just keep coming back. And, and then I spoke to my, a friend of mine who um, is now one of my business partners and we knew each other from Jiu Jitsu and he ran a recruitment business as well. Uh, so he had a hospitality business, but recruitment. And I said, okay. look, what if we did this? Mm -hmm. Like, what's your thoughts? And he was just like, that's the future, you know? So he goes, if you're serious about this, I'll sell my business, um, close it down, sell it, whatever, and we start this like now. And how many staff did he have at the time? I think it was like 20 or something like 20, that. 20, and they were all talent acquisition, like recruitment? Uh, some, so like his business was set up where it was like, a, it was a recruitment and training um, organization. So he actually had a restaurant um, and then like trainers, talent acquisition, like it was kind of- Like an RTO? Like an RTO, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but they, they had a big like a recruitment function. Ah, uh, right, And right. Um, Okay. Yeah, so then when he said that, I was like, okay, this is, this is real then. Mm. So quit my job, like quit everything and just said, I'm like going in. And um, how long ago was this? For like three years. Three years ago, yeah, really recent. Less. Yeah, it's pretty recent. And then, recent. so I just started drawing, like got a notebook, started drawing all these wireframes of like what the app could look like or how it could work. Mm -hmm. And I showed it to him and he goes, look, you know, he'd, he'd ran a whole bunch of businesses um, globally, but all bootstrapped. And I'd actually ran a couple of businesses myself, but bootstrapped as well. Um, and so we both kind of looked at it and said, look, this is, this can be really big mm -hmm. or it can be really small. Um, but if we want to do something like, I guess, properly, let's go and get money for this. But both myself and him had never raised money before for our businesses. But did you bootstrap initially when you, I like, guess, started? Or? Kind of. Very, very, like, very small period of time. Like, right, it was right. more like during the ideation stage. So I wouldn't really call it bootstrapping right. at that time. Okay. Um, so what ended up happening was we, he has a friend who's now one of our other business partners. Uh, so there's three of us, other three founders. Um, he, I don't know, he's built like 12 businesses or something like that. And a lot of them have raised money. So originally he just goes, look, let's bring him, let's ask him how we get money. And when we explained it to him and showed him the, the app, um, he kind of was like, well, actually in one of my businesses, I need three people right now. So, and, and he, the way he was getting people would, was he was going, uh, I think it was like he was, he'd go down to the gym and just be like, hey, who wants work? I'll pay you this much, come in and work. Like, cause it'd just be like data That's entry, yeah, like yeah, yeah. basic stuff. Anyone can do it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so he's like, wait, I can just, I don't have to go to the gym anymore and ask people, right? So oh uh, he was like, I'm in. And we're like, what do you mean? We, we just need, like we're just asking you for help, how to, he goes, nah, leave it with me. I mean, I'll get you, go, I'll go get your money. So you knew the idea was just like, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. Just like, he, and and yeah. he was just like, I'm, I mean, I, I, yeah, this yeah. makes sense. And so he in, in introduced us to our now investor. We pitched to him, we hijacked this dinner. Um, he was almost there. Um, and then what happened was my, my third founder, so he actually followed him onto a plane and pitched on the plane for six hours. Um, uh, it was a funny story where when he, he got the seating almost right, there was some random person in the middle. So he was like, hey, can we swap? The middle person was like, nah, I'm not swapping. So for six hours, he like leant over him and pitched. Um, oh. And then the guy's like, ah, oh, I'll, I'll swap with you now. He's like, no, no, you're gonna, you're here for the whole ride now. Um, 
And so, yeah, by the time the plane landed, we had our initial seed. Um, and so he sent us a message like, hey, good to go, let's, let's go. So we, with that money, we basically started um, building like the app. Uh, the app, yeah. Yeah, so what, what, it, what it like functioning could look like or that kind of stuff. Um, and, and that's, I guess, like the story of how we got started. That's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's been... I <laughs>